All right, so we are back for part two of Silent Days, Silent Dreams by Alan Say. So we're just gonna pick up where we left off from yesterday's lesson. One morning, as James's older brother, Joe, cleaned the chimney, he noticed James watching him. Later, their mother told Joe that Jimmy had taken some soot in a jar and to see what he was up to. If you don't know what soot is, soot comes out of the chimney uh, from a fireplace. It's the black stuff. He's smearing soot with his spit, Joe reported. He's drawing on junk paper and making books out of them. Craziest looking books you ever saw. All trash. You'd think he's finally learned to read. Some artwork. James drew everything he saw around the farm and decorated his studio with artwork. He drew a lot of imaginary houses with his name on them. By then, James had two younger sisters and there were seven kids all together. One time, his brother Joe stole some drawings and showed them to the girls. He finally learned his name. They laughed. Jimmy's dream house. Look, he's made friends for himself. James stayed in his studio to guard it from invaders, and whenever he caught Joe and his friends trying to raid his room, he let out piercing screams and chased them away. And Dummy got his second mean nickname, Crazy Jimmy. In 1923, James's parents sold the farm in Garden Valley and bought a smaller farm in Star, Idaho. All of James's artwork was left behind in the ice house loft. At the new place, James turned an empty shed into his second studio. Mr. Castle died four years later. Only Mrs. Castle, James, and his younger sister, Peggy, were left at the farm. When Peggy married and had a baby girl, Mrs. Castle sold the farm and together they moved to Boise. Again, all of James's artwork, which he had carefully wrapped in packages, was left behind. In the new house, Peggy had three more children. Her husband, Guy, put a cot and a desk and a little wood stove in the old abandoned chicken house for James. Lonely for friends, he made cutout dolls, farm animals, and birds out of cardboard saved from trash bins. Got creative. He made furniture out of cardboard, even a window. He turned the chicken house into his third studio, which was also his for real, his first real bedroom. It wasn't long before the neighborhood kids discovered Crazy Jimmy's studio and trashed it while he was out. After each raid came a terrible scream. Finally, James took an armload of his artwork. Wonder where he's going. And made several trips to the nearby canal. But James liked kids, and he was friendly to anyone who showed interest in his work. Even though that didn't happen often, I'm the only one he ever allowed in his studio because he knew I liked to watch him draw. Besides, my mom, Emma, is his next younger sister, two years older than Peggy. Even though he couldn't hear me, I called him Uncle Jim. He never knew my name was Bob. So I wonder what made him throw his artwork into the canal. Because that destroys it. A canal is water. Hmm. 
wonder if it made him feel better or worse. My family moved to Washington when I was 13, and after high school, I joined the Army. I thought a lot about Uncle Jim. There was no use in writing him. My letters would just be scrap paper for him to draw on. As soon as I was a civilian again, I went to Oregon and enrolled in an art school in Portland, where, to tell the truth, I was just an okay student. The professor didn't notice me until I showed him some drawings that Uncle Jim had given me. He got very excited. Where is this artist hiding? I've got to meet him. Uncle Jim was going to get me an A from the hardest professor at the school. I agreed to drive him to Boise. I hadn't seen my uncle in 10 years and hoped he wasn't still living in the chicken house. The professor babbled more than usual he took away examples of uncle art, uncle's art and organized an exhibit of it back at the school in Portland. So Uncle Jim had his first one-man show at my school and he never knew about it. Then a gallery in Portland sold some pictures. Newspapers wrote reviews about the amazing art made by a deaf artist who was completely self-taught. The sales of uncle's work excited Auntie Peggy very much. Then Bob Clay, the director of Boise Gallery of Art, heard the news. They're take, talking about a local artist, he exclaimed. Mr. Clay visited Uncle Jim and Peggy's house. He brought with him a drawing pad, and soon the two men were drawing each other in it. Then Uncle Jim showed him his studio. The chicken coop depressed the director, but the artwork so impressed him that he promised to put up a show at the gallery. He asked Peggy not to bring James to the gallery in his overalls, but was still surprised when James showed up in a silk suit. Mr. Clay said James was the sharpest one at the opening. The turnout was good and a few pieces were sold. Reporters and photographers hovered around the artist. He stayed long after everyone was gone, looking at his work in all in frames, rocking slowly in his new shoes. Peggy was happy when some galleries started selling his work. Then he worried about people seeing where her brother lived and worked. She took him to a used trailer dealer. Uncle Jim drew a picture of Peggy with wheels for feet, which she didn't understand. After a lot of growling from uncle, she bought him a two bedroom mobile home and a television and I heard him laugh for the first time. He could laugh like anyone else. After 30 years in the chicken coop, Uncle Jim finally got his dream house, as the family called it. He worked in it for 15 more years, in the same way he had when I was a kid, drawing with soot and spit on scavenged paper. I think he was happy. I'll bet he was. He finally got his house. Remember him drawing that house? So that was our book, Silent Days and Silent Dreams.